Hello everyone! Today we are going to take a look at how to easily turn ourselves into zombies. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this image so that I have only what I need. The crop tool is shortcut C and it's just like with Microsoft Word or Instagram. Just cut out what you don't need. Maybe I'll leave a little bit of space to the sides and hit enter when you are done. You can zoom on in holding command plus. Now we're going to make a duplicate of our background holding command J and I'll rename the background layer original. All right first things first we're going to add some texture to our face. Let's make sure we're on layer one. We're going to go to the concrete image use our move tool shortcut V and click and drag the concrete over to the image. You can hit command T to rotate the image. Just make sure that it is fully covering your face. Once you do that you're going to go over to your layers panel where it says normal and you're going to change your blending mode to overlay. And you can see now that you can see the image of your own face underneath. I'm going to go over to the opacity settings, drop it down to maybe 80, see how I like that. That's fairly good. And you can play around as well with where you put the concrete on your face. Maybe you want a lot of heavy detail, or maybe you prefer the larger uh, patterns on your face. So find whatever pattern you like. I kind of like the more detailed stuff on the face there. Hit enter when you are done. Now I'm going to add a layer mask and I will use a soft brush. So my hardness is going to be down to zero, but also a large brush. I can use my square brackets to make it bigger. And with my brush set to black, I'm just going to remove any parts, or rather hide any parts of the texture that I don't need. So I'm taking it off of my hair and my clothes. Now I'm using a soft brush because if I use a hard one you get very harsh cutoffs which I don't want. So I'm going to go back to using a soft brush and then you just get some more faded edges which helps to ease the transition. Remember you can make your brush bigger or smaller as needed. You can zoom in to get any areas that are giving you any trouble. And I personally like to take the texture off of the eyes. So I go in nice and close and I make sure that the eyes stay clean because we're going to mess around with those a bit later. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I am done with concrete now, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now I'm going to change the color of my skin and I'm going to do this a different way than we did last time because I enjoy using masks for things like this. I'm going to go down to the shape tool. Right now it's on ellipse for something I did before but the rectangle tool is what I want. And I'm going to click and drag a rectangle over the visible area of my skin. And a new panel is going to pop up. It's called the properties panel. And here you can see the width and height of the shape. This block here is the color of it, and I'm going to give myself um, a bit of green skin. Let's go with the darker green, see how that is. That's really all you need to change here. Hit close the properties panel, open up your layers panel, and we're going to apply a new blending mode. So I'm going to try overlay, and I'm going to mess around with the opacity. You can click and drag by holding on to the opacity word. That's not too bad. Soft light is another option you could try, but I prefer overlay for this. Good. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and add a layer mask and do the same thing that you did with the texture. Use your brush to take away the color from anywhere that doesn't need it. We're only really trying to affect our skin right now. So the hair, stay like that. Again, I'm going to zoom in, get some more detailed areas, like in by the nape of the neck, edges of the hair, 
and there we go. All right, not too bad. Good, and I'm going to zoom into the eyes again and just clear those up a bit. There we go. Awesome. Now, things are going to get scarier. We're going to go over to the skull tab and you're going to get rid of the black background. The easiest way that I find is to use the magic wand, have a high tolerance, and if you do it while the layer is locked and you try to delete, you're going to get this. You just hit cancel, double click your background layer, and rename it to unlock it. And then with everything selected when you hit delete, it will delete. Remember to deselect with Command D. Use your Move tool, Shortcut V. And let's click and drag the skull over to the image. It's going to be quite big. So zoom on out if necessary. Command T to transform it to size. Remember if you hold Shift and Alt, it'll go uh, and resize according to your center point. Zoom back into your workspace. Resize again. Now it's hard to tell if it's lining up with the facial features, so go ahead and change the blending mode again. Let's change it to overlay. Good, now we can see how things are lining up. So that's actually pretty good. You just want to make sure that the sockets and the nose and the mouth are fairly lined up. Hit enter when you're satisfied. Take a moment to label your layers. I'm just going to label this one texture. And rectangle one, I'll label color. Layer three, label it skull. And we're going to add a layer mask to the skull and do the same thing that we did for the last two layers. Use our brush to just fade in the transitions. There's a really harsh outline of the skull, but if you just use a soft brush and kind of go just on the edges, it'll make it look like it belongs more. There we go. Be sure to get around the edge of the cheekbones. Make sure that your natural jawline is visible too and that the skull doesn't take over. There we go. Very nice. And now, remember that if you hit X, you can change your foreground and background colors so that you can add something that you might have accidentally taken away. Done with the skull. Now let's go ahead and add the ribs if this is applicable for your photo. So once again unlock the background use whatever tools you want to select this. I'm going to delete that. Use my lasso tool to just get rid of this little bit. Good. Now I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to drag this over. It's made a new layer. And now I'm going to resize it so that the neck portion of the spine just makes a bit more sense, really. So I'm going to go right about here. Enter to set it. Change the blending mode to overlay again. Now that's quite prominent, so I am going to drop the opacity down to maybe about 50%. That's pretty good. Put a mask on it, and once again, you guys I'm sure are getting the gist. Just help to make it look like it belongs. Make sure none of the texture color is going onto your clothes or your hair. We want to make this relatively seamless. And oh, I forgot on the skull layer on the mask, make sure that your mask is selected. You want to keep the eyes clear. So let's see if I can clean that up. There we go. Awesome. Lovely, okay. Now I do want the eyes to look a little bit out of this world, so I'm going to show you guys uh, a way to do this. There are lots of different ways, but here's one that I prefer. So I'm going to go back to the shape tool over here and I'm going to use the ellipse tool. Ellipse just being a fancy word for circle. I'm going to draw a circle roughly over my eye like that. You can hold shift to make sure it's a perfect circle. Once you've made it, you can use your move tool to move it. 
I'm going to choose a really bright color for my eye. Good. And now if you have your move tool active and hold alt, you're going to see a little double arrow appear. And if you hold alt and click and drag, it duplicates the shape that you had just made. Lovely. And now, so this one that I just created over here, I'm just going to rename it right eye. And this one down here can be left eye. And now I'm going to take a moment. You can play around with the blending modes. Depends on the color of your eyes, really. Whether or not this works well. You might have to do a few extra steps if your eyes are particularly dark. So I just changed it to overlay, but the perfect circles are kind of bleeding onto my eyelids. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to add a mask. And then using the brush, I'm going to just kind of trim the bottom where my eyelid is. And what I also like to do actually is make the pupil visible again. I'll do the same on the right eye, add a mask, trim the edging where you don't need it. And let's show the pupil again. So let's zoom on out, see how that looks. Good, very nice. And now our final touch, we're actually going to go all the way back to layer one. And we're going to use something called the burn tool. Now what this is going to do is it's going to help create different reds and browns to help us look even more kind of sore and torn up. So this again is a tool with a brush. So if you go ahead, the first setting we're on, we'll do midtones. Let's see what happens. I'm going to just use it around my eye. So you can see that it's making things darker. I'm going to do that for anything that's really a socket. I'm going to do it around the nose. Good. And I'm going to do it under the chin as well to kind of create some shadow. Good. You can play around with different types. Midtones will create a certain kind of color. Shadows will create something else. Now remember that Photoshop doesn't know what you're trying to do, so be careful with where you click. I just got some of the burn marks on my hair, so it looks a little bit strange. And if you hold Alt and click on the layer that you're affecting with this, you can see it's almost like you're kind of bruising yourself. And it's showing through underneath all of the other layers and just kind of enhancing the sense of depth overall. So that's pretty much it. If you have done those steps, then I am certain that by now you are a pretty terrifying zombie. So have fun with it. Play around with a bunch of the different settings. See what else you can do. How much more gruesome you can get it. And have fun with it, guys.